Thank you for tuning in to the World Builder's Anvil, episode 166. Don't know where to start building your fantasy world? Do you need more? Does it make sense? Forget any worries and become a crafter of imagination. This is the place that will help prime your mind. Now, it's time to heat up the forge, break out the mithril ingots and hammer. Welcome to the World Builder's Anvil. I'm your host, Jeffrey W. Ingram. Let's sup from the mug of Java and build. Jeff can okay. barely talk right now. Like, he was crying a second ago. I had him laughing so hard. Well, he had himself laughing so hard, to be truthful. He still, he still got the giggles. You, you, you played your part in it, though, so that, yeah. that's what matters. Je- Jeff, I think, in the moment, I certainly figured out as he was doing it. I don't know if you realized it when you were doing it, that we can mess with each other while the other person is doing the intro by making noise. Now, normally we try to do it visually so that we're quiet so that there's no extra noise on the recording but i think it dawned on jeff it it certainly did after the fact if not in the moment that he can make noise because we're recording separate tracks which means all he has to do is mute himself during the editing session and he can say whatever the heck he wants to mess up my intro but i said you know what it's a double-edged sword buddy you just opened up a can of worms because now i get to do it to him I am a professional. I have uh, no recollection of what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, the annoying thing was, though, that first take, I, I was totally in the moment and could have soldiered through it. I just stopped because I was like, you just ruined a good take, not realizing. And that's when I realized, wait a minute, it's definitely separate track, separate track. So he didn't ruin the take. I just did. <clears throat> yeah, I know. What a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. It would have been a good take, too. I was on that one. <clears throat> So welcome to the show. Right. <laughs> welcome to the show, everyone. And today we're talking about those little inspirations that you can find every day. I think every a lot of times day. as world builders, we uh, kind of get stuck up on looking to ancient cultures or modern cultures or science or – Well, you do. Uh, no, and there's nothing wrong with doing I'm all not, that stuff. No, but I'm the just thing saying. Is that's, we uh, miss what's right in front of our face. We, we miss the life that's happening. And the great thing is – you can make your life a lot more enjoyable if, if if you can get your world building passion tied into it. So one of my personal beliefs is I go around and I look for little inspirations all over. You know, this winter, uh, when I've been basically locked in my house, like just taking weird pictures of just things in weird positions. Um, and it might end up being no inspiration at all, but it, it forces me to focus on the little details that happen all around you um, that you end up missing because you're not paying attention to life. Um, my uh, my beautiful wife and I last night went out to the Science Museum in Hartford, which is normally very much a kid's uh, environment. It's a very yeah. interactive science museum. And um, uh, it was closed to children last night, 21 and over only. So they had music. Was it like a fundraiser kind of thing? I don't know, honestly. Sarah might be able to answer that question. Okay. But um, it, they had – a radio station was there. There was music. It's, it's like six floors, and like all three of the upper floors all had music and alcohol. So Very cool interactive uh, yes. displays. <clears throat> I hate the one where you have to sort of put the electrodes on your head and clear your mind. Yeah. I cannot win that to save my life. I, I didn't <laughs> see – as a younger person, when I would go into places like that, I would be, oh, cool, like lots of cool things you can touch and play with and interactivity, mm-hmm. yay. Now I walk around going, these are so covered with disgusting children germs. <laughs> <laughs> so like I don't want to touch anything. <laughs> you know, I'm like just grody people have been touching these things all day long and there's like no sanitary wipes anywhere, so I'm just like, nah, I'm not touching any of the stuff. <laughs> but my point about it <clears throat> is that we were out in the world last night and mm. it was fun just to be out because we haven't been doing a lot of things like that lately. Uh we've been, we've yeah. been working on saving money. But Sarah wanted to go out to this thing, so I was like, yeah, sure, let's go. <clears throat> so it was cool to be out there and see different people and, you know, it just got me thinking about culture. So, yeah, yeah, no, you know, it's, it's always important, especially when you're trying to work down the debt because it's a great thing because you, 
you make your life better by doing it, but it kind of sucks while you're doing it. Mm. But finding low and, and, mm. and, and low cost point, fun things you have to do occasionally, or you'll completely break down. And yeah, lose. exactly. Um, <clears throat> at least Kristen and I would. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. And, and really the thing is the overall real point of this episode, I'll get to it now. So you can just shut it off and stop listening to me. Jeff, that's like not a, not, not a good way to, not a good way to sell the show. N- not a good way to do it. No, no, no. Tell them I'm yeah. about, I'm about to drop some mad science on you. So you're really going to want to listen to the rest of the show. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I've been to say. Bury the lead, Jeff. Bury the lead. Uh, Tune in at 11. (laughs) Five minutes towards the end of the show, you're going to hear some really (laughs) great stuff. So stick it out. And don't hit fast uh, forward because Jeff has a couple funny things to say once in a while, too. (laughs) Once in a while. Once in a while. Once in a while. Uh, But, yeah, you know, pay attention to the world around you. And it's weird. When I I started doing this – I, I found that I actually got reverse inspired. Like I, I saw things that reminded me of things in my world, and I got inspired for things uh, to put into my world. And uh, there's a great example. There's a a tree that I should a tree stump I should get rid of because essentially a couple of years ago a wind shear came through, ripped up the tree. It fell towards my roof, and just with the luck of science and physics and its exact location and exact size. It damaged the gutter and slid right off instead of hitting my roof. And um, so it screwed up the gutter of my house, but not the house. But the stump is still there. And so now you have sort of mushrooms growing on the stump. And I kind of realized looking at this stump, and I'll put a picture of this in the show notes for this episode, is essentially if I look at this uh, tree, it's flat on the top. It has these sort of uh, uh, the types of mushrooms just sort of extrude from the side of it. So they're kind of those flat mushrooms. And it kind of looks like to me, uh, there are two uh, orcish cities, uh, Ordessa and Vilna in my world, which are plateaus that near the top, the city is carved in and on the outside of the mountain. And on the top of the mountain, it's, it's a small plateau. So it's sort of flat on the top of these things or, you know, around it. I'm like, you know, that kind of looks like in my head what I think of with these cities. Now it's, of course, wood and mushroom and the city's all stone. But um, it, it just kind of occurred to me going through it. And then uh, this year we, we had a pretty good uh, winter uh, in New England, but we had like one week where we kind of got nailed for snow. And when, he mean, when he means good winter, he means that we haven't had an exorbitant amount of snow or an exorbitant amount of cold. But yeah, there's still a little time left. There's not, still a little time not, left because in New England up through <clears throat> mid mid March you can still get those six to twelve inch storms. But um, but you know it's like we had one week where we got hit pretty good where I think we got like a sixteen inch storm and you know a few other little storms uh, like back to back like I think like five days or six days in a row mm. like every other day we got a, another little storm after the big storm that week stick, so, sticks out for me because that's the week that I uh, my back was really bugging me and I had a of day course off. I, I well well no but I had a day off of work because of the snow and that was the day I, I wrote the expo- expositional um, scene in the story circle oh okay so I had the time to write I wrote all morning and by the story circle Michael is talking about in uh, our fantasy uh, world builders group uh uh, there's a story circle going around where people can just contribute to part of the story uh, as they want to. Yeah, if, if if you guys like hear us talking about this and want to try it, like just come to the Undercroft group. Like we we, we it's already had a few passes. Mm-hmm. It's probably in the neighborhood of like twenty thousand words at this point. So it's kind you, of erratic, but it's okay because you, you have it's, it's, no it's, real planning going to it. I, I people are trying to tie it together backside. Yeah, things. like I, I'm yeah. not sure where where I haven't the, the, this pass is going to get to me any day now. So I'm very curious to see what's occurred because well, and I think it didn't really help where I was about three quarters <laughs> of going through what I was doing when I got hit with the flu really bad. And oh, so, you, <laughs> did you did you did you not complete your section? You just I passed? did not complete my section. Oh. I ended up just passing it on. Oh, that. Could, but it was to a point tough. where it was more like I just screwed over the next guy again. <laughs> um, so it's like twice I screwed him over. So okay. I just wanted to take it a little further than I did, but I just I couldn't I couldn't focus on writing at that yeah, point. So yeah, I and I had held it for too long. But um, it's a lot of fun. Go to. Uh, uh, facebook.com slash groups slash undercroft and uh it will take you right there do we have or any if you search for fantasy world builders undercroft or undercroft our group will pop up i'm gonna take a look real quick we don't have anybody new to shout out this uh, this uh week do we 
Uh, no, I do not think so. Okay. Okay. Because I've not let anyone in since the last time we recorded, so uh, I do not think so. All right. Uh, but, uh, well, on the the topic, well, you were talking about your tree and your mushrooms. I was talking about the tree and the mushrooms, and I was moving into the snow. And so when I was snow blowing, then you know, uh, you create these great canyons, and it sort of started making me think. Well, there's this area, you know, um, uh, where what I call the the inner dwarfs live, and uh, they have the city on the surface of the planet, which they think is the inside of a cave. So that's why they're the inner dwarfs. The outer dwarfs live underground because they're out searching for heaven by digging. And um, but but to me, it's like there's a river approach to it through kind of a canyon. I'm like, you know, this is kind of reminds me of that you know kind of approach so i I started realizing that there there are things to inspire me you know from just these mundane activities in my life i don't always need different cultures i don't need all these other things start paying attention jeffrey and and those kind of things maybe start paying attention um you know the way my pets interact with each other is another good one you know um the way they show dominance the differences between them but you know it's like when you have four cats, they have like essentially their own culture. You know, how do they battle for dominance? How does all of that stuff happen? Pay attention to the world around you and it will take you to new inspirations and where, you know, unless you have kitties in space, you're probably not going to directly use the cats, but you might see one type of interaction, one type of sound that's inspiring. Um, it's like we have this cat we call Bubby. Michael has never seen Bubby, I don't think. Um, hmm. He's a very skittish cat. Whenever anyone comes over, even if he knows their voice, he disappears. And um, for like a year after we got him, he would do it when like we would come home. So he, it was a very, very skittish cat. And um, But he, he's over time learned to meep. Uh, he, he does, we never heard him meow or growl or do anything. But he'll be battling with Boo, our, our outdoor older cat, who uh, typically terrorizes uh, cats that bother her. And so she'll be doing all the traditional cat things you would expect, you know, with hissing and the back arching and the tail real puffy. He'll look the same as her, but then when he opens his mouth, he'll be like, meep. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, it, you know, it makes you think of, you know, <clears throat> you know these things that we take, take for, you know, cute uh, are, are usually cute, but sometimes... You know, wouldn't it be funny to have a culture where, you know, you know, it's it's almost like counter to what people would expect. And I would never do that with a main culture, but with a culture a main character would interact with that was on the side, it would be kind of funny to do that where niceties are bad and bad is nice. Um, not necessarily up to the point of like murder, but, you know, hello is like a really big insult. You know, being friendly and what you would think is friendly would be have the opposite effect of what you would normally think. So these are the sort of the weird things that hit my mind when I, when I'm just living my everyday life. And the thing is, it makes me want to live my everyday life to its fullest because now I'm finding inspiration everywhere. And now I think the other classic one that's really important for authors and world builders is we're always looking for characters. We're always looking for new characters and um, spend time when you go out you're going out to uh, have dinner, especially. Um, you know that's a great time to do it. If you have a busy street, sit on your porch, uh, watch life go by for a little while, watch the people, watch their interactions, make up stories in your head about what they're talking about. You know, take their gestures as mannerisms. These are things that you can sort of add into your palette to sort of create more rich, diverse characters is just imagining what what these two people must be talking about because you can maybe see their facial expressions. So you can maybe get even some of the context of the conversation, but you don't know what they're saying. And don't spy on them. But I'm saying like out in public do this. Don't use drones to check into you know, <laughs> windows. But... Um, you know, when you're out in public, take an opportunity to watch what's happening around you. You see that person walking focused, what's keeping him so focused? You know, what's the important thing to him? And it's not going to be true, but make, make it up in your head. Create these little stories as you go through life. It'll make living life a little more enjoyable and it will help build up your repertoire as a world builder. And one of the things that I find uh, fascinating is ants. 
Um, yes. I, wa- I watched this thing where they took, <clears throat> um, I think it was liquid aluminum, and poured it into a massive, massive, um, I believe abandoned, uh, I hope abandoned, uh, ant colony. Mm-hmm. So, And they poured a lot of it in, like a whole lot. And then they dug and they let it cool for a while and then they dug it out. And you see a city. It is an underground mm-hmm. city. It is absolutely astounding what mm. ants build. So when I will you know walk down the sidewalk and I just see an ant on his, you know, merry little way carrying a little <laughs> something. Yeah. I'm just like, there's just this guy, this little worker guy, he's got a job to do. And he reports back to a superior. There's a there's a massive infrastructure to this little hole in the ground, this teeny mm. little thing that I see in the sidewalk. There's something huge underneath there yeah. that goes on to him seemingly for miles. Yeah, yeah and I, I, I agree completely. Ants are have always been a fascination to me. And you know, and and I I watch nature shows about ants. Uh, you know, we've done episodes about ant monsters, about ant races on this uh, podcast. And um, the thing I've always found interesting is it's the differences between them, and sometimes like the strange decisions of where they end up. Where you know, like a great inspiration for a race, and I forget the type of ants right now. There's a group of ants that live within this tree. And like the whole colony is built within the tree. And it's a symbiotic relationship with the tree and the ants. It's like the tree is built in such a way where it helps protect the ants from bigger predators. And then the ants will actually defend the tree if bugs come that eat leaves. They will actually attack them. And so they live together. And the entire world of the ants lasts as long as the tree does. And whenever the tree dies, the colony will die. Uh, but it's a it's an interesting like type of thing that you can kind of use for inspiration. Ants are interesting because they have their own cultures. I mean, obviously they're not, you know, at least we don't know that they're as developed as ours. But they have hierarchies. They have some people who benefit more than other people um, within there. Uh, they have these predetermined jobs by birth, apparently. Um, so they're very fascinating to look at. Uh, just as to get a slightly alien look on on the ways to develop cultures, I think. So I think ants are a very interesting one, too, is I will watch ants. And typically when I'm looking for details, it's not just big stuff. It's little stuff. You know, things that interest me are the signs uh, companies use to get people to go in to eat, like those little diners on the side of the road or, or – um, Grocery stores, not the big like, you know, Geisler sign, but like the signs on the windows, you know, why is that thing good and that thing bad? And it's usually about price or about what they're serving on the inside, but it's the details that make worlds come alive. And one of the, the mistakes I think we we do as world builders, and and I'm as guilty as anyone at times, is we we get stuck in this idea that we are creating this paper version of an actual world. Um, but the way I like to think about it is more like an allegory to, to movies. In a, in a great old movie, they would build that castle on a hill, and you would see the shots of this castle on the hill. And if it was really well made, you would think that there's this castle in Transylvania on this hill, and Dracula lives there, and you you buy in completely. That, that, bad, bad example, that actually happened. Uh, well, not the ones used in the older movies. Uh, those castles weren't there. And that's my point was you buy into the perspective that there's this castle on the hill that, that these characters are going to interact in. The castle's a model, and they're all in sets. But you believe it. So Who does the that mean you can buy the complete set? <laughs> it's just a model. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's like you buy in – to the believability because the perspective you're letting people look at gives them this illusion. And a lot of it isn't just the big pattern stuff that I love and talk about a lot, but it's the minor details of what's the sign to get you to go in to the potion guy shop. 
what could he do to let you know he's a potion guy shop, especially in a culture where people can't speak? You know, and you see this in games where there'll be a potion hacked onto a sign, but would that really work? I don't know. Uh, if it's a, become a common symbol and it was in every town, probably. But would that lure in people <laughs> off of the streets? Go down there to the pa- pa- go down there to the package store. The potion guys just like, oh, you're the drunk. Packing. I sell potions. I sell potions, not liquor. <laughs> I need a six pack of beer. <laughs> so where? So where's the booze? Oh, three <laughs> blocks down. Here, try this. This is a different form of poison. <laughs> but your but your sign your sign says alcohol. That's a picture of a bottle. <laughs> right. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I can read. <laughs> it's just a picture. <laughs> We're going to a Pats game later. Um, <laughs> you know, that was more of a Canadian accent. Okay. Well, I kind of yeah, Nothing that wrong joke. with Canadians. Yeah, but they're probably not going to a Pats game. Um, uh, that's true. <laughs> I'm probably not going to a Pats game. By South, he somehow uh, converted completely over to a Canadian accent there, eh? Hey. Eh? Hey? Okay. <laughs> Now, um, I apologize to all the Canadians because I, I, I'm assuming, like most other parts of the country, you hate the Patriots at this point. So uh, mm. I do apologize. Um, and I do deeply mean it, really. Uh, okay. Now, um, it has kind of led me to this idea kind of going forward that Chris and I are going to start doing where once a month we're going to do a walkabout. And this kind of goes back to the old, uh, uh, you know, uh, Crocodile Dundee walking about, you know, out in the wilderness, you know, the the dangerous outback of Australia just to, to do it. I, I apologize to our Australian friends. Not everyone thinks the walkabout is about Crocodile Monday. Yeah, but that's how most Americans understand it. Not, so. not, 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 not most Americans. Just you, Jeff. Yes, just you, you. you can lie and try to make yourself feel superior. Jeff, but you learned about it from watching about Crocodile being, Dundee. About you learned superior. about it from Crocodile Dundee. Don't lie to I don't me. think so. Okay. Well, okay. So Michael's going to lie. So we're going to go back to walkabouts and, and, but the idea is walk about with the purpose of finding inspiration, pick a town, pick a park, uh, pick a place. Don't make it too big. Something where in a day you can go through it. Um, go find the important structures, you know, the town hall, uh, that, you know, we have, uh, we have the squares in, in, in New England, or at least in Connecticut, where at the center of the town, there's a square, uh, town greens, uh, circles sometimes, whatever they are, start start at the middle and look at the important structures. Do they stick out from the rest of the town around them? You know, how do the people live? You know, is it is it like, you know, in those complexes where there's like sort of uh, commercial at the bottom, maybe uh, jobs in the middle and housing on top? Is the housing spread out, single family? How do people move back and forth? Because one, this kind of teaches us patterns of how people actually exist in the real world. But, you know, you find these neat little unique details, a, a sign that's very compelling. Um, you know, and I like to take pictures of that kind of stuff because that way I can refer back to it later. Um, but just, you know, you, you, you pick a place, you start in the center, and you do sort of a search grid and go through houses and everything. Just open the doors and walk. No, wait, no, don't do that. <laughs> I was- Again, Jeff. <laughs> don't be encouraging. Uh, I, I mean, don't do that. Don't use drones. But things that you can see, you know, you know, as you're walking around from public areas that are of interest, take pictures. Take pictures of the architecture, you know. And then, you know, as you start doing a couple of towns in the area, you're going to see the consistent things of the culture of the area you're from. And, you know, like... I moved around a little bit, so it's like I know like the center of a town in New England is different than the center of the town in Indiana. Um, think about things from a granule, granular perspective. Uh, yeah, we were, you're thinking from the bottom up. We were, uh, again, we were at the Science Center, and we looked at this uh, 3D um, um, digital model. Uh, you know, it was on a screen, but you could interact with it, of the uh, galaxy, <clears throat> and it went, it started in Connecticut and backed all the way out to the Milky Way. Yeah, that's a cool <clears throat> yeah. And it allows you go to go to different planets and take a look at a nebula and different things like that. So it, when you think of the scale of things like that, it's like <laughs> holy crap. But you can yeah. bring that scale down and do that to things right in front of you. Like I'm I'm sitting here at my desk, which is a littered mess of objects and, and junk. Um <clears throat> and I could literally pick like 
a thing. Like for instance, I've got this little plastic monkey right in front of me. It's 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 about a half inch large. Now I got this from a cocktail uh, that I don't know is name the monkey was in the name of the cocktail, so they gave you this little plastic monkey on your straw or in your glass or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, I, just that I can come up with stuff, and just you could make a whole story where this desk is this monkey's habitat. You know, and that's just something small that I'm in the moment and it's right in front of me. So that's what I'm doing. Going back to the And ants, he's probably filled with cake at the time. Probably filled with, well, probably not cake. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to explain that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it, the, the point is that if you, if you change the scale and you put yourself, mm -hmm. as, as a world builder, you're God for your world. You are creating mm -hmm. The universe. The universe might not be a full universe. It might just be a planet. It might just be a continent. It might just be a city for a tabletop game. Point is that you're God in that scenario. You are the creation source. So for you, it's a macro perspective. So you can get to micro detail. And mm -hmm. you can find all these things right around you just by looking around. You don't even have to look hard. You just have to be present. You need to be yeah. aware of you need to be aware of what's around you, or maybe just clear your mind and really look at things just really look at something and let let your mind take you where it's going to go mm -hmm. yeah you know and you know along those ways too you know embrace detail back out to the macro scale most of your world will, will be built from patterns down but the problem is in every culture and every re religion um and in, 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 in everything involving sentient people, there are always inconsistencies, too. And it's hard to build in uh, in language. Every language on Earth has things that are inconsistent about them, things that break the rules of the rest of the language. Those exist, but they come from details that are embraced within areas. So that also helps you find some of those inconsistencies sometimes or create ones that really stick out because you're taking it from the small granule level and working back out. So, well, a lot of times I focus a lot as a world builder going from this pattern of civilizations and of climate and these big patterns and filling in details where I want them. I'm also going in, taking the monkey from Mike's table and creating an inconsistency in a culture somewhere and pulling it back out. And you should always use the monkey on Mike's table for that. <laughs> Sometimes it's on my back. <laughs> when it's on my back, I name it Jeffrey. That's <laughs> <laughs> Always the monkey on my back. So, you know, go out, explore where you live, uh, around where you work, your house, your neighborhood, do these things, find these small details, and let your everyday life inspire you as much as going and looking for inspiration in other places. It'll just make you enjoy life a lot more. Yeah, the other thing that uh, came to mind is um, <clears throat> it kind of reminded me of uh, the uh, the game from the Sega Genesis, Warriors of the Eternal Sun, which was a D&D game. Um, it's weird. I don't remember that one. Oh, it was so good. There were so many incredible aspects about that game. Um, I could go on and on about just that game. Mm -hmm. I won't do that, but it took place in, um, a kind of like an entrapped Valley. Like they, like there were just walls of stone all the way around this large area. So, but it was built into the story. So there was a reason you couldn't leave the area thus <clears throat> from a, from a, a game creation standpoint, giving you a bounding, a bounding space, mm -hmm. but, but giving you a bounding space with reason. But I was sitting here staring at the cracks in my floor. I have wood floors in this room actually after throughout most of the apartment and you've got these big grooves. So I thought, okay, well, what can I get out of that on a micro level? Like what about a culture that can, that is completely bound by living in effectively a valley, but like, Mm -hmm. a valley that goes pretty much infinitely in both directions. They can't go east or west. They can only go north or south or, or mm -hmm. whatever directions you choose to have it. But the point is that 
everything takes place in that that area. They could go a long way that way, or they could go a long way in the opposite direction. They just can't go left or right. So mm. <clears throat> what would that create for weather? What would that create for culture? How would that would create warring states when everything's in a line? You know, mm. if you want to conquer the really fertile land that's up the way, <clears throat> you got to go through every warlord between here and there. You can't go around. Mm. You can't go all the way around. Like for some reason, like the, either the, the slopes are too steep or, or, you know, there's magic involved or whatever, but imagine everything's in a line, not in a big open landscape. That would completely change the story. That would change the people that would change everything about it. And that's just for me looking at a crack in the floor. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, Use, take the mundane aspects of your life and make them more enjoyable. You know, it, it will take the sting off of having to do mundane tasks as well because you're doing it in a different perspective. It'll make you happier. Um, it will make you live your life in the present, which to me is huge. Um, you know, and there's nothing wrong with playing the future or looking at the past. I do, trust me, I overthink everything. But typically, as I'm going through my day, I'm living in the moment. Uh, I, or I, I try to at my best. I try to let the past go. I try to let the future wait. I'll take moments and reflect and think, but I won't get consumed. But it allows me to see so many things around me that I would completely, and for years, I did miss. All right. So now for the world-building task of the day. You get to do that one, Michael. Okay. I mean, I, sorry, I had to ping, You ping closed the, the file. I, no, I didn't close it. I just had it open in a second window. <clears throat> so the world building task for the day is walk around your yard, walk around your house, your apartment, wherever you live, and just look at the small details. Now, the two things that I'm going to say here is clear, maybe like three or four things. <laughs> clear your mind, first of all. Try to, yes. try, to, try to just be present to the moment, but also focus. I'm going to say two very contradictory things. I'm going to say focus on a singular thing, and I'm going to say keep your perspective open to wherever it might take you. So you kind of mm -hmm. need your periphery open as well. But if you some, if something kind of grabs you, then hyper-focus on that for a few minutes. See what you can do with it and, and pull some inspiration out of it. I mean, I guarantee you if you're listening to this show, you've got a lot of creativity. We're mm -hmm. just trying to push that in a direction you may not yeah. have used it in before. And the great, the great thing when you do this too is then when your wife comes at you for leaving your clothes on the floor, say like, "Shh, I'm world building." <laughs> I don't think I don't think and, that's and gonna, then you better pick them up. Yeah, very yeah, 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 yeah but pick them up. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, 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 wait! Don't, don't, don't touch them yet. I'm almost done. Honey, <laughs> <clears throat> would you do the laundry? <laughs> and now for the real world task of the day. Uh, start looking like pick a map up of where you live. Look for some small towns or like city neighborhoods that are interesting. Be careful and use your brain while you do it because it's a little bit more dangerous out in the real world because there are cars on streets and maybe bad actors that you're more like hopefully more likely to run into outside of your house. Uh, so you have to be a little bit more aware of your surroundings. Yeah, yeah. But, be safe always. Be safe. Yeah, you know, keep the safety in mind first, but go go through and just start exploring, seeing. How people are moving, what are those main streets like? You know, how does the, the, the town center still have any part of the town anymore? Is it still important at all? Some towns, they're sort of off to the side and the downtown becomes more important or a different part of town becomes more important. But think about the communities where you live, around where you live. You know, if you have the money, uh, go find some places where you see locals going into and just go in and try the food there. Um, you know, experience, take a day and experience something around you and, and, and come up with a plan to, to do that when you go places to do more than just go to do your typical tourist stuff, just which is good, too. If like you, you go place like New York City, you want to do the tourist stuff, but you also want to just see what is what is this neighborhood like, you know, down here, the whole walk all over. Like if you go to Boston, walk all over the Harbor area, walk all over the town and just take it in. Look at the architecture, look how it's changed over time and realize that 
if you want those inconsistencies, those details that make things look real in a world, this is how you find them. This is how you do them. You know, you need the sign telling you it cost five cents for a grape soda, but it, that hasn't been true in over 70 years at that convenience store, but they've never taken the sign down. But you know, those are the those are the treats that you can find when you pay attention to the detail. And also, if you go to Boston, make sure to go to Hanover Street and eat Italian food. I'm just saying. Uh, if you are going to be in Boston, I'm going to recommend. Um, <clears throat> oh, there's this great burrito place. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Taqueria. Go to Taqueria, and you should definitely hit Mulberry Street. Yeah, a lot of a lot of fun stuff on Mulberry Street. Yeah, Newberry Street. Like, Newberry Street. Mulberry Newberry. Street. Newberry. Like Newberry Comics. Newberry Comics. Yeah. Mulberry Street. Um, what am I thinking? Oh, those people in Mulberry. <laughs> <laughs> They're heathens. Burn the mulberry. Sorry, boss. Don't burn the mulberry. That's a, <laughs> that's a joke. <laughs> but you don't hit over street first because the food's better. Mm. Um, it's it's one of the best little Italy's for restaurants I've ever been to. If not the best, it's like literally every other building's a restaurant. Just pick one, go into it, and eat it. The food will be terrific. Um, if you don't like Italian food, I'm sorry. Um, I know. Oh, yeah. You got to love Italian food. Yeah, but especially if you're in New England, if you don't like seafood, eat Italian food. It's the other native food to New England, ironically. Yeah, it is ironic uh, how many, how many yeah. good Italian – you can get a lot of good, good Italian food. In New yeah, pr- and pretty much like you can go to like these little weird towns in Connecticut, pick a random Italian place and get a good meal. Yeah, odds, odds are it's a safe bet. Odds are it will be good. Uh, pizza or grinders, which are subways for other people, or uh, small Italian dinners, delicious. Mm, I'm hungry now. Well, on that note, I got to go. Get some lunch. Thank you so much for listening to the World Builders Anvil. We would love it if you would share the World Builders Anvil with two of your friends, and so would they. If they are unfamiliar with podcasts, then you get to introduce them to the wonderful world of podcasting by showing them Stitcher or iTunes, or best of all, just send them to our website, www.gardul.com. That's G-A-R-D-U-L.com. Now strike, why the mithril's hot.